Hi everyone, this is Mr. V, and welcome to um, episode two of the Apes Review. Uh, this is beginning of unit two, topic 2.1, Introduction to Biodiversity. So what is biodiversity? As you can see from some of the pictures here, uh, biodiversity is this idea that you have um, all these different availabilities at your three main levels, which are going to be genetic, species, and habitat biodiversity. So when we're talking about genetic diversity, we're talking about within an individual uh, species. So um, that sounds weird because you think species are for species, but that is going to be within one species. And when we talk about species diversity, that's the fact that you have different species in an ecosystem. So we have here some examples. Um, there's uh, some kingbirds in this picture. Okay, All these kingbirds are very related. They are typically flycatchers. Um, and some of them are so difficult to identify the different species, the only way to do so is by their bird call. Okay? Um, and then you can have different habitats, which can be anything from marshlands to forests to any other kind. So um, having an, an increase in these um, uh, forms of biodiversity helps quite a bit um, for an ecosystem. So how do you get genetic diversity? Well, the more genetic diversity um, that you have, that allows for a better response when there's environmental stress. So for example, um, if there's a disease or limit in resources or habitat, or even pressure um, from an outside source, those things having diversity allows the species to do much better in a long-term picture. If you have too little genetic diversity, that can lead to a bottleneck event. And uh, like the diagram shows up here, you may not end up with um, the type of genetics that help you long term. They may end up being weaker and the new population may not be so great. So here's a unique case. Um, in the last couple of um, years, there have been a couple of sightings of this yellow uh, northern cardinal. So on the right side, northern cardinals are supposed to be red. That is the color that they typically come out, right? So they're supposed to look like that. Um, but sometimes they'll come out yellow and we've had a couple of uh, genetic mutants that have come out yellow, which means they lack the pigment to become red. And so, you know, it's too early to tell because there's only been a couple of cases, uh, one in Alabama and um, another, I can't remember the state, but um, those locations are, those um, situations are unique, but it's not a guarantee that that's going to lead to genetic fitness. There's some scientists who've been studying and following these individuals and seeing that maybe they not, they're not able to mate as well or that females may not look at them as um, uh, fit to uh, mate with to have more babies. Um, but then others say, well, if they made it to adulthood, they might have, uh, they might probably have made it farther enough and could be able to mate. So that's something that um, is up for debate, but this is how things begin by having that genetic mutation. And then long term, you can see if that mutation is beneficial or not. Now for species diversity, it's important to have different uh, type of species in a habitat. So you can have a grassland that can become a monoculture, um, and that's not a good thing for a species. And so when you have that, um, they're not able to respond very well to natural disruptions or even man-made disruptions. Um, and so having more individual species of different kinds in an area allows for certain locations to talk about. And we'll talk about a little bit more about that when we talk about succession in the following PowerPoints. And so what are the results of habitat loss? Well, you end up with species that can sometimes be considered specialists like the panda, okay? Panda is a very famous case. Um, it's a very specialized, it's got a very specialized habitat, very specialized diet. And because of that, it can only handle a limited range of habitats in certain situations. Whereas generalists, they can handle a wide variety of habitats and situations. And they tend to be, um, usually, they tend to do much better. So which one's gonna be more affected by habitat loss? Well, as we can see by the ca classic case of the panda, um, those specialists are gonna have the worst uh, case scenario a lot of the time. And so this leads to species richness, right? What communities do better? Well, it's good to have a variety of species, but it's also good to have um, what we call species evenness. So if you look right here, community one has the same four species as community two, but you may notice the differences in numbers. So we've got 6% in two, 12, 70 and then 12 again. So even though they have the same number of species, you do tend to have one dominant species in the group. And so um, that can be good, but it also can be bad because others may not be able to flourish and the habitats may not be as diverse as you need, but then you have species evenness, which can be much better for um, a variety of species um, and lead to more long-term health of an ecosystem. 
So here's some resources that cite some of the articles we talked about and some of the um, uh, different sources. So I uh, hope you found that helpful and uh, thanks for watching.